My parents were very supportive and thought that education was mm -hmm. critical. Um, and so they pushed us, my siblings and me, to really get everything we could out of the experience. Neither of them graduated from high school, mm -hmm. um, so this was important to them. Mm -hmm. And having the opportunities that they gave us and that we, we were out there um, achieving was important. So that there, there was a lot of support from home. Let's talk a little bit about coming and choosing Barnard as your undergraduate institution. I, I came to Barnard because I wanted to be in New York City. I lived right across the river and often looked at New York City as the place to be. I also wanted to do urban studies and at that time Barnard and still now has an urban studies program. So that's what I came here to do, but it was much more than that. I talk think. about the much more. The much more. Yes. <laughs> The, I think the Barnard was immediately a welcoming place. Uh, there, it, the smallness of it mm -hmm. allowed you to learn from and have relationships with faculty members that I don't think uh, is possible at a larger institution. They got to know you on a first name basis mm -hmm. and you got to work on assignments with them our research work with them. Yeah, there was also lots of opportunities for women to get involved in college activities and, and leadership positions. We talk a lot about women's colleges um, creating leaders or, or cultivating leadership in their students. Talk a little bit about what motivated you to get as involved as a student leader as you, as you did. To be more part of the campus, I joined a lot of uh, groups and activities and got more and more involved in, co in activities through my work-study program. I worked at the registrar's office for the first year and got to know a lot of people there as well as a lot of the administrators and they encouraged me to participate more uh, in the life of the, the college. What was your first major setback in college? I wanted to double major in urban studies and women's studies, but you had to concentrate in another department. I set off on that path, and like senior year, I got overextended and stopped attending one of the classes, oh, and had to. And it was the last class I needed, or the last credits I needed for urban studies, so I never finished that. So that was a setback. But it, the it was deciding that either you know what's going to go mm -hmm. and and am I going to fail this class, or am I going to sort of give in and admit that you know this has been really hard? It's been a lot of classes. It's been a lot of sort of things that needed to be done in order to complete both majors. So, um, making up my mind to drop that class was was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I did. But you did, and yeah. I think it, I think that's a powerful message as well. That sometimes throughout life we have to decide when the plate is too full, yeah. um, when we've bitten off more than we can possibly chew in that incidence, and at the same time still achieve some goals. And when you look back over the four years, what is the highlight? When the academic work in, in the seminars and sitting and sort of learning from others mm -hmm. um, was really a valuable thing that I carry with me, and it's what I do all day is make decisions, sort of, and plan paths forward. And I, from the seminar experience, you learn it's important to hear lots of different voices. Everybody's got a viewpoint. All of them are valuable. They know what they're talking about. They've done the reading. Mm -hmm. They know. Um, and so now I, I hear what everybody has to say, and that informs my decision. Everybody's viewpoint. It, has to be taken into account and then you develop a path forward and hopefully everybody's got, um, can agree with it because they've heard each other too. And on the non-academic side, just working in college activities, it was a lot of fun planning events and I met a lot of great people um, that, and I think got a lot of experience planning things, mm -hmm. sort of, again, I, it's important to be able to sort of know what the steps are in, in, to achieve a goal and, and lay them out in front of you. Talk about some of the surprises. Uh, law school surprised me. Hmm. I, it was, you know, it's a 
lecture, back to lectures. I was doing you know, seminars with right. max seven or eight people. And so this was a, more of a lecture and very, and the Socratic method, you know, you did your reading and you got called on. And that, and there was, I think, a bias or sexism that I had never experienced mm. at, at um, Barnard, more among the other students, the male students, than they, they talked mm. over the women. Mm. And mm -hmm. it was like, what the heck? What's that about? And because mm. it, it just never happened here. Right. Law school was uh, an adjustment because of that. Um, and the practice of law, and now it's much, much better, but there is uh, bias, implicit bias, if not explicit bias, mm -hmm. in the judiciary and in um, adversaries. Mm -hmm. But you, sort of, they're always a little suspicious mm. um, of whether you know your stuff. Yes. So always be prepared, be mm. over prepared. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was what I did. Mm -hmm. Coming to a place where I was a minority for the first time. I hadn't mm. ever been a minority. That was an adjustment, and I, and it's helped prepare me for being an only or one of few in other uh, spheres in law school. And then at what my first year at the law department, there was only uh, one other Latina in my, on my entire floor, which had probably more than. 200 lawyers on it, and we became fast friends. I mean, you seek each other out to, because there is some connection, um, and and seek support. So that was something that I learned at Barnard and and continue to do wherever I go.